So today we're going to start off with Morse v. Frederick, a uh, case from 2007. And, and we're using this as the follow-up to case v. Tinker v. Des Moines um, because this largely sets the boundaries or for what First Amendment rights um, exist within public schools. Now, I'll, I'll start off up front by saying that while Tinker sets a precedent for political speech, this case sets a precedent for not political speech. And between those two wide gaps, there's a lot of case law that still has left to play out. Um, a lot of places where the, where the United States Supreme Court hasn't weighed in. So think of this as me setting bookends. There, there's Tinker on one end, there's Morse on the other, and there's still a lot of questions and stuff to be filled in in the middle that just haven't been litigated yet. Um, so that, that's kind of where Morse comes in. Uh, so in the case of Morris B. Frederick, the, the background is um, this case takes place in Alaska um, in which uh, a high school um, was on the route in, by which the Olympic torch was being run past. So the school sponsored an event um, to support the torch relay in 2002 um, and, and had students gather outside to cheer, rally uh, the torch on, what have you. Um, one's a group of students um, who were technically across the road from the school, but still at an obviously school-sponsored event, um, unfurled a banner that read, Bong Hits for Jesus. Um, the principal asked the students to take the banner down. When the students refused, the principal confiscated the banner and ultimately suspended the student um, because the principal viewed that and argued that the banner supported illegal drug use. Um, so the issue in this case is uh, similar to Tinker v. Des Moines, but different. Um, because of the nature of the banner, it isn't clear that this was political speech. In fact, it isn't clear what the speech was intended to do at all. Um, so can uh, the issue in the case is can uh, school administrators um, quash a student's speech um, that supports activities which the school does not necessarily promote. Um, and the court in this case, in a, in a sharply divided decision, a 5-4 decision says, yes, that the school district actually completely can. Um, First Amendment rights were not violated um, because the school can take steps to safeguard those entrusted in their care, from speech that can be reasonably regarded as encouraging illegal drug use. Um, they, the court weighs in, it's clearly a school speech case, even though the student was across the street, um, but because the banner was unfurled at a school-sponsored event and students at the school could see the banner. Um, the Supreme Court uh, and Chief Justice Roberts, who wrote the opinion, uh, said that the banner could have numerous interpretations, including some that were offensive. Um, it, but it, the court says it isn't clear that there was a political message embedded in bong hits for Jesus. In fact, the message itself is not clear, and therefore that the principal interpreted this um, as being a, 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 pos a positive statement toward uh, illicit drug use um, is, is plausible. Um, so the court comes down on the side that this is not about political speech. They distinguish this case from Tinker, um, where Tinker was very clearly political speech. This case is not clearly anything except speech. It involves student speech. But the purpose of that speech, the, the attempt of what was advocated, is, is not clear um, to any reasonable observer, um, including the principal and including the Supreme Court, who, who could not interpret what bong hits for Jesus um, actually met. For the court, the really, the crux part of this case is that it took place in a school environment. Um, so since it was in a school environment, and since it wasn't political speech, then the administrator, in this case the principal, could absolutely quash that speech for any really rational reason. And the principal said that the, the nature of the speech itself was disruptive, and it possibly encouraged illegal drug use. And that's all that the principal needed to do, according to the court. Um, that, that was to have those two uh, assumptions. And that was a rational reason why which to um, restrict uh, this individual's speech in this case. Um, there are a few important 
uh, con concurrences, one of those being Justice Thomas. Um, Justice Thomas agrees with the majority that the student speech, could, student speech could absolutely be suppressed in this case, but he goes on further to basically say that Tinker was wrongly a wrongly decided case. So even though the majority doesn't um, rely on Tinker for the decision in this case, they distinguish Tinker from this case because Tinker was very clearly political speech and this, and this speech was who knows what. Um, but Thomas goes, well, we didn't need to distinguish it from Tinker because Tinker was wrongly decided. Um, Thomas says that the history of public education suggests that the First Amendment, as originally understood, does not protect student speech in public schools. Teachers commanded and students obeyed, and teachers relied on discipline in order to maintain this order. And thus, Thomas comes down on the side that there exists absolutely no First Amendment rights for students. No one else on the court joins this opinion. Justice Alito and Justice Kennedy also write a concurrence. Um, Justice and Alito and Justice Kennedy um, argue that the public schools can absolutely suppress, suppress uh, speech that advocates for illegal drug use, um, but schools can't suppress um, speech that comments on political or social values, including speech, uh, including the war on drugs or legalization of marijuana. So if the banner had read legalize bong hits for Jesus, Justice Alito and Justice Kennedy would have, in, in essence, decided of it very differently because the speech itself would have been advocating for the legalization of marijuana. Um, but because this the speech was simply advocating for illegal drug use and was doing so in a fashion in which it wasn't at all clear if they were advocating for anything, um, Justice Alito and Justice Kennedy uh, side with the majority and that suppression of the speech um, is supported. Justice Breyer, interestingly, concurs in dissent. So he agrees with part of the case and he disagrees with another part. Um, he says that the case should not have been decided on the merits, uh, decided on the merits of the First Amendment at all, that the issue is it's not a it's not a First Amendment issue for Justice Breyer. Um, Justice Breyer says that the court should have decided that the principle had what is known as qualified immunity, and she didn't clearly violate the law. Now, what is qualified immunity? Qualified immunity is a protection that executive actors have um, that mean that they're immune from suit when they're operating within the confines um, of their office. Um, qualified immunity has become very um, controversial recently because qualified immunity protects officers um, police officers when they're acting um, within the confines of, of their employment. Um, they have in a sense of, of immunity um, from civil suits for actions that stem from the, um, that from, they have legality from um, civil suits from actions that stem from what they do as an officer. So wrongful deaths, police shootings is on and on and on. They have qualified immunity from that. And Justice Breyer was saying that this principle as an executive actor also has qualified immunity and was simply enforcing the rules and therefore is immune from suit in this regard. Um, there are three primary dissents, just, well, there are three individuals in one dissent, Justice Stevens, Justice Souter, and Justice Ginsburg. Uh, they agree that the banner itself was complete nonsense. Um, but it was nonsense for a TV audience. Um, and, and the school punished the student because it disagreed with its, with its message. Because that message, disagreeing with the message is viewpoint discrimination, the, the dissenters say that the First Amendment should absolutely um, protect against this. Even if the message is stupid and not clear, quashing the speech is an example of viewpoint discrimination and therefore the First Amendment should protect in this regard. Um, so there's no real question that the banner was nonsense, um, but the, the school in essence shouldn't be able to punish um, speech, with they speech which they disagree with solely because they disagree with it. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of gaps that exist. We, we've kind of bookended on one end patently political speech in schools, and then on the other hand, nonsensical, non-political speech on the other side. 
within that gaff, there exists a lot of area left to be litigated. Um, so we don't really know what the true confined, true definition of um, student speech rights in schools are. But we know that, at least from the way it was distinguished in this case, that purely political speech that is non-disruptive in nature, which is the primary holding of Tinker, um, will absolutely be protected and more simply carves out an exception um, to Tinker in this case.